Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Thank you for your people. Happy people. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Blessed people. Thank you for our people here, favored people. And I pray that, Lord, you open the windows of heaven. And you shower your blessings upon them in Jesus' name. We take every hindrance out of the way. Everything, anything that will hinder anyone, we take it out of their ways in Jesus' name. Pour your salvation down. Pour your healing down. Pour your deliverance down. Pour your prosperity down. And Lord, I pray, nobody will live here empty-handed tonight in Jesus' name. Touch every life and turn everyone around. I thank you for the miracle already that everyone is going to receive. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be delivered. Tonight is our night of freedom. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. It's starting already. And all through the message, just pay attention. You just discover your problems are gone. I'm talking to you tonight before we pray on the highway to abundant overflowing blessings. The highway, the expressway to abundant overflowing blessings. I'm reading from Psalm 1. Psalm 1, I told you, is a passage we're all familiar with. And it is in this passage your miracle will come out. I'm looking at Psalm 1. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, blessed is the man. Who is the man? Blessed is the man. Now, when you hear a man here, it's not just of the male. It's male and female. That word in the original is mankind. That means, blessed is the person. Blessed is the man and blessed is the woman. What kind of man? What kind of woman that walketh not? In the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of discomfort. It's describing to us here the blessed man. Actually, you see, the book of Psalms started, starts with blessedness. Just like the Sermon of the Mount, the Sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ, it started with the way to blessing. And here the psalm is telling us how you can be blessed. In the original, that word blessed is in the plural. It means blessedness in the plural. All kinds of blessings. Salvation is here today. Healing is here today. Deliverance is here today. Provision is here today. Prosperity is here today. And all that thing that have been following after you, wanting to destroy your life, tonight I announce to them they will go. And all that captivity where you have been, all the things holding you down, I come to tell your Pharaoh, let my people go. And whether he likes it or not, tonight you're free. Tonight you are delivered. Your wife will be free. Your children will be free. If the children have not come, I'm announcing to them, why are they getting late? Miracle children, come quickly. And your miracle children are coming in Jesus' name. And so he talks about the multiplicity of blessings that will come upon the people who believe in the Lord. I see believers there tonight. I see receivers there tonight. You believe, you receive. And you receive because you believe. Believers are there. And those who are coming for the first time, tonight God will surprise you with miracles. He says, blessed is the man. And now he begins to describe the man. He describes the man, number one, negatively. Number two, he describes the man positively. Number three, he describes the man practically. That man that is blessed, he will not walk like this. He will not stand here. He will not sit there. And then in the, in the positive, he tells us he will do this and do this and do that. Actually, I'll be talking about you tonight. Because you are the candidate for miracle. Amen. What you see there? Amen. It's coming. Amen. The highway 
to abundant, overflowing blessings. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, the partakers of God's abundant blessings. The partakers of God's abundant blessings. Then number two, I'll be talking to you on the prevention of God's announced benevolence. The prevention, that is there are people, they hinder themselves. And they close the door against their own miracle. But tonight, that door that is closed, the key will come. We are going to open your door. And all the things that have been hindering you and preventing you, when I come to that point, I'll tell you, and then we'll open the door and your miracles will flow in. Number three, the promise of God's abiding benefits. Abiding benefits. What you receive today will abide. My miracle will abide. My miracle will stay. My miracle will be permanent. You know, some people, if they get something after a week or two or one month, it's gone. The one we're getting here tonight, one month is still there. One year, it's still there. And for the rest of your life, miracles, 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 permanent. And uh, it will remain with you in Jesus' name. Let's come now to Psalm number one. Psalm one, and I'm reading from verse one. We're looking at the partakers of God's abundant blessings. The partakers, who are these? We're told about them. Look at them. In verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in a counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the seat in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of discomfort. Verse 2, But it is delight. Is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be, I will be. He shall be, I will be. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You will be fruitful. Your wife will be fruitful. Your children will be fruitful. The work of your hand will be fruitful. And then it says, His leaf also shall not wither. I like this one. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Look up at me here. Whatsoever I do will prosper. Say it for yourself. Whatsoever I do will prosper. As you wake up tomorrow morning, and then you are going to your place of work, prosperity is going to follow after you. Whatsoever I do will prosper. Can you say that again? Whatsoever I do will prosper. Now let's look at the person we're talking about. Blessed is the man. It says, number one, that walketh not. Number two, that seateth, that standeth not. Number three, that seateth not. Now you will see, it talks about the ungodly. It talks about the sinner. It talks about the sin, discomfort. And it says, you don't, if you're going to be blessed, and I see blessed people there, and because you are going to be blessed, it says, you will not stand with the ungodly. And it says, you will not walk with the sinners. And it says, you will not see each with discomfort. Can you see how the sinners, how the unbelievers, they go down? It says, first of all, they are walking with the ungodly. Then they, stop, they don't just stop at that. Now they are sitting, they are walking, with their walking, and then it says, they are standing with the sinners. And then they are sitting. You see the people, they go from one level of sin to another. And they go from one level of ungodliness to another. They walk, they stand, and they sit. But it says, if you're going to be the one, the man God blesses. And you're going to be the one, that God, the woman that God blesses. It says, you will not stand with the ungodly or the sinners. You will not walk with them and you will not see it with them. Now, what does that say? It says, number one, you are free from the counsel of the ungodly. They don't counsel you. You know, there are people, they have any problem and they want to seek the counseling. It says, no, you don't do that. You don't walk with the ungodly. You are not seeking the counsel 
of the ungodly. And then it says, you will not stand with them. What does that mean? You will not be in their company. And then number three, you are not sitting with them. You will not have anything to do with the concept of the sinners or of the scornful. Number one, their counsel will not be a part of your life. If you're going to be blessed, you have to do something about that. That's why it tells you in Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Sinners would like to advise you. This is how we smoke. This is how we drink. This is how we do evil. But it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All those ungodly people, all those sinful people, all those um, people of iniquity, people of sin, it says they'll want to counsel you and they say, and that's why uh, the Proverbs tells you, my son, if sinners entice you, if sinners tempt you, if sinners invite you, if sinners try to influence you, if sinners try to counsel you, it says, consent thou not. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. It says, my son, don't walk with them. Why is he saying, don't talk with them? Because you want to be blessed. You want to receive the blessing of God because it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Number two, you do not take their, you do not take to their company. You do not stay with their company because it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What if you don't do that, but now you stand in the, in the way of the sinners? Sinners have their ways. You see the people who use their body for money, they have their way of doing that. And it says, you will not do that. And the people who smoke, they have their way of smoking. The people who join gangs and the people who belong to cause, they have their way. That's why it says, let the sinner forsake his way. And your righteous man is not. And let him return unto the Lord. If you have been far away, tonight is the night to return. And when you return, blessings will come upon you. The Lord will forgive you anything you have done in the past while you are far away from the Lord. Tonight, God says, I want to forgive you. I want to cleanse you. I want to change your life. He will cleanse you and change your life in Jesus' name. And if you're a believer, they have been calling you and uh, you have been under real serious pressure and temptation. It says you want to have the blessings of God, many blessings, multiple blessings, manifold blessings. It says there's something you are not going to do. You will not walk in the way of the sinners. And that will bring power into your life. Power is coming upon your life. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody there today? Power is coming. Everybody say power. And let me show you in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 8. Remember, it's talking about the blessed man. It says, this man will not walk in the way of the sinners. He will not stand with them. Neither will he sit with them. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And we're looking at verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 3. It says, in verse 3 it says, be not hasty to go out of a sight. Stand not in an evil scene. Don't stand there. Stand not in an evil scene. When you see people doing evil, you see people committing sin, you see people that they're doing things, you know if the government catches them, then trouble. You know that if the school authorities catch, catch them, they're in trouble. You know that it, when God catches them, they're in trouble. And it says, you will not stand in the evil scene, for he doeth whatsoever pleases him. Look at verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is what? There's power. You see, once you obey verse 3, and you are not standing with those sinners, you are not staying with them, you say, I come out of that. I come out of evil. And then you come to the side of the Lord. You say, Lord, I'm not walking in the way of the, of the sinners. I'm not standing in the way of the sinners. I come out of evil. It says, it will give you power. 
and power and authority will come upon your life. And it says, where the word of the king is, there is power. And then it says, nobody can tell him what doest thou. That power is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. As you come to Psalm 1 verse 1, we're still looking at that man, at the blessed man. And this is the negative description of the man. Because he stands, he walks not, and he stands not, and he sits not. It tells us in that uh, chapter 1, reading from verse 1, it says, blessed is the man. And this is the man that walketh not in, uh, that, uh, that does not uh, walk in the counsel of the ungodly. This is the man that does not stand in the way of sinners. And is the man that sitteth not in the seat of this comfort. He is the man that sitteth not in the seat of this comfort. Now it tells you those three postures that you're not going to have with the unbelievers. You are not staying with the believers when they are playing their local game. You are not staying with the unbelievers when they are drinking their whatever they are drinking in their nightclub. And you are not having any association with them. You say, I come out. I come out. I'm not part of them. I'll not walk with them. I'll not stand with them. I'll not sit with them. And you are paving your way to blessing because that is the highway to blessing. And that is the express way to blessing. And when you come out of that, maybe you came out before, but now little by little, you're trying to walk with them. Ah, you're going to lose a lot of things. Or maybe you are now sitting with them and you are planning together and you are discussing together and they are telling you what to do and you are telling let's do it this way, that way. You are joined with some believers and it says your blessings will not be, will be delayed. But as the blessing is coming tonight, blessed is a man and blessed is a woman that walketh not in the way, in the counsel of the ungodly. Are you there? Am I talking about you? I will not walk in their counsel. I will not stay in their company. And I will not walk in their concept. And when you do that, and you give yourself totally to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I come out of everything completely. And I come out of every evil completely. I come out of anything that is sinful, anything idolatrous, anything that is occultic, anything that is immoral, anything that is abomination unto you. I come out of everything. And then, as you come out like that, you fulfill part one. Because it says, blessed is the man. And blessed is the woman that walketh not in that, that standeth not in that, that seateth not not in that. Now, let's look at another thing. That one is separation from the world. You see that verse 1 is just talking about separation. Separation from the world. And that is what the Lord is telling us. He says, you want my blessing upon you. Love not the world. Now that the things are in the world. If any man loves the world, uh -huh, the love of the Father is not in it. Because all those things of the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of, eye, of the eyes and the pride of life, they are not of the Father. They are of the world world and the world is passing away and all those people standing with them walking with them and sitting with them they will pass away with the world there will be no blessing upon them but as you distinguish yourself and as you isolate yourself and say Lord here I am I am a candidate for blessing and I show that because I will not walk in their way I will not stand with them in the way. And I'm not going to see it with them and doing evil with them. Then your blessings will come. Your blessings are coming. Then look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, But its delight is in the law of the Lord. When it says law here, it's talking about the word of God. You see those uh, Hebrew people, Jewish people, whenever they talk about the law, they're not just talking about the Ten Commandments. They're not just talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Tommy. They're talking about the whole revelation of the scripture that have been given to them. And for us, what does that mean? It means the word of God. The totality of the word of God. Everything the Lord has revealed to us, the Lord has given us. Look at that again. But his delight is in the word of the Lord. And then it says, and in the word, in that law, in that word, does he meditate day and night? 
What do we learn about the man who is going to be blessed? About the man who is going to have multiplied blessings, multiple blessings, manifold blessings. Number one, we learn his affection for his word. His affection for his word. Look at that. His delight is in the word of the Lord. The people who have affection for the word of God, you wake up in the morning, you read that word. And then you are going through the day, you are meditating on that word. And the word is important to you. The word directs you. The promises of the word, they encourage you. The prophecies of the word, they give you hope. And the precepts of the word, they challenge you that this is the way, what key they are in. Number one, you have affection for his word. Those are the people that are going to be blessed. There are many people saying, bless me, bless me, bless me. And they do not fulfill the condition. But tonight, you have come so that you will fulfill the condition. You'll have delight in the word of the Lord. Love for the word of the Lord. You'll have affection for the word of the Lord. It tells us another thing here. He has assimilation of the word. Assimilation of the word. He has affection for the word. That's why he reads the word. That's why he receives the word. That's why he believes the word. That's why he even memorizes the word. That's why he thinks about the word. That's why everything he wants to do during the day, he says, what does the Bible say? Somebody wants him to do a particular business, this kind of business, what does the Lord say? Somebody wants him to marry this or marry that, and he says, what does the word of God say? Because he has affection for the word, and he has assimilation of the word. He takes the word in. You know, there are some people, they go to church, or maybe they come to church, what goes in in one ear goes out the other ear. They don't assimilate. You can ask them, how about this passage of scripture on forgiveness? They don't understand. They don't assimilate. How about confession and forsaking your sin? They don't assimilate and they don't have the word. How about your action, your conduct, your character as a believer? If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. They are forgotten. They are forgotten. And so they behave like they used to behave and they live like they used to live. But this man that is going to be blessed, and thank God I am that man. And thank God you are that woman. But it says you will have your delight in the word of the Lord. You'll have affection for the word of God. It says since now you have risen with Christ. That means you are born again. You are identified with Christ. It says seek those things which are above. Where Christ is seated on high. And set your affections on things above. In that same chapter, Colossians chapter 3. It says let the word of God dwell in you richly. In all wisdom. So that out of that word of God, you act and you live and you have your being. Because number one, you have affection for that word. Number two, you have assimilation of that word. Number three, you have attention to the word. You give attention to the word. When the word of God is going on, you'll not, you'll not be doing any other thing or thinking of another thing. You say, they're preaching. Let me give attention. I'm reading the Bible. Let me give attention. I'm meditating on the word of God. Let me give attention. The people that have their affection, their assimilation, their attention to the word, those are the people that are blessed. And you wonder why we read the Bible in our church, we study the Bible in our church, and we apply the Bible in our church because we want to be blessed people. We want to be people that will have all the abundant blessings of the Lord, all the overflowing blessings of the Lord. That's why we give so much time and so much attention to the word of God. See what the attention to the word of God will do. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, here I'm reading to you from verse 20. For Proverbs chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 20 here. Attention to the word, attention to the word. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. It says, my son, attend to my words. Isn't that what we have been saying? My son, if you're a child of God, if you're a child of blessing, and if you're expecting abundant blessings from the Lord, it says, my son, you know how to do that? How to have that express way that leads to miracles? Now to have that expressway that lead to the supernatural. It says, attend to my word, incline thine ear to my says. What will happen then? It says, let them not depart from thine eyes. 
keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them. They are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, healing is coming. Because as you give attention to the word of God, you'll give attention to the promises of the Lord. Because those promises are the word of God. That's why it says, if you're diligently hacking to the voice of the Lord your God, and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are put upon the Egyptians, because I am not I was, I am not I will be, I am even today, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Your healing has come. Because the promise says that he will heal you. He says he'll serve the Lord and then he'll bless your bread. He'll bless your water and he will take sickness out of the midst of thee. Inside your heart, he'll take sickness out. In your kidney, he'll take sickness out. In those levers, he'll take, he'll take sickness out. And all the evil sicknesses of the world, everything will pass away from you in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Who is this one I'm reading about here? Look at this. And it says that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat cometh. And her leaf also shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You'll never stop yielding fruit. That was Jeremiah chapter what? Verse what? 17 verse 8. Look at Ezekiel chapter 17 verse 8. Ezekiel chapter 17 verse 8. It says, it was planted in a good soil by the great waters. And it says that it might bring forth branches. It says this, the reason why the Lord has planted you. And the reason why the Lord has established you there, the reason you are born again is not to be born again and then go back to the world. When you are born again, he plants you in the body of Christ, in the church of the living God, that you will bear fruit. And he says that he might bear fruit and that it might be a goodly vine. So number one, we learn about this man. His permanence. Number two, his productivity. His productivity. Look at this. It says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. Productivity. You'll be productive. In your work, you'll be productive. In your family, you'll be productive. In your education, you'll be productive. And in your business, anywhere you go, you'll be productive in Jesus' name. Because it says, number one, it's permanence. The people that are staying there, the people that are stable, and the people that know I'm born again, and the Lord has planted me here. I'm born again, and the Lord has placed me here. I'm born again, and the Lord has settled me here. You're not like an unsettled person. The one that is just, you know, here and there, your, your permanence. And then number two, your productivity and now he talks about how do we bear fruit? Because he talks about bearing fruit. That you'll bear fruit, I will bear fruit. I said I will bear fruit. How does fruit bearing come in your life? Fruit bearing comes because you abide in the Lord. He tells us in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and I'm reading here from verse 4. John chapter 15, verse 4. This is how you have productivity. Number one, the permanence. Number two, the productivity. It tells us in John chapter 15, and here we're reading from verse 4. John chapter 15, verse 4. It says, abide in me. You are permanent there. You are planted there and you are staying there. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abideth in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine. 
Are ye are the branches? And it says, uh, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Look at verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatsoever, whatever ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That's how we bear fruit. You abide in the Lord. And the word of the Lord is abiding in you. And because you are abiding in Christ, and his word is abiding in you, tonight it will answer your prayer. Every request it will answer. If you are born again, you are a child of God. If you are born again and you are abiding in the Lord. If you are born again and you rejoice in the Lord. If you are born again and the word of God is settled in you. He says, whatever you ask him, whatever you ask him, every prayer you pray, he says, he will answer. He will answer today. He says here in it, verse 8, is my father glorified. The Father will be glorified in your life. That she bear much fruit and, she, and ye shall be my disciple. Disciples of the Lord, number one, his permanence. Number two, his productivity. Come back now. Come back to Psalm 1. We're looking at verse, at verse chapter 1 of the Psalms and we're looking at verse 3. He's talking about the man. He says, he, this man, blessed is a man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. And then he says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, does he meditate day and night? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And then he says, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What's that? His prosperity. His prosperity. Somebody there will prosper. Yeah. What are you there? You will prosper. Yeah. The work of your hands will prosper. Yeah. But let the word of God abide in you. Any dream you have, any personality talking to you, and they say, and that thing will not succeed. You don't wake up and say, you know, I'm, I'm in trouble. You know, I've come into another crossroad again. Because that personality that I always meet, he came to me tonight and he said, this new project you are starting will not succeed. And he said that before. That was before. This year is a different year. This time is different because this time we talk about your permanence. You are planted by the rivers of water. We talk about your productivity. You will bear fruit. And then we talk about your prosperity. Whatever you do will prosper. Whatever you are selling will prosper. And whatever family you have this year, you'll prosper in Jesus' name. And so we talk about the partakers of God's abundant blessing. Who are they? They're the people who are separated from the world. Who are they? They're people who are saturated with the world. Who are they? They're people who are situated by the waters. These are people that will not walk or the ungodly. These are the people that will not stand or the sinners. These are the people that will not seek or the scoffers. These are the people that have affection for the world. These are the people that have the assimilation of the world. These are people that have attention to the world. These are people who are permanent in the body of Christ in the church. And their seat is always occupied in the church. There's no time you'll say they couldn't come today. They're always there. You'll always be there. I said you'll always be there. You'll be permanent there in Jesus' name. And then you're productive. Their productivity and you're prospered in Jesus' name. Number two, the prevention of God's announced benevolence. I'm coming back to Psalm 1. I'm reading now from verse 4. There's some people that hinder themselves. There are people that prevent themselves from the blessing of the law. You will not prevent yourself. You will not hinder yourself. The blessing of the Lord will flow through your life in Jesus' name. 
I'm looking at chapter 1 of the Psalms. I'm looking at verse 4. It says, the ungodly are not so. Ah, that is, the ungodly, they are not permanent. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so. They are not productive. The ungodly are not so. They don't prosper in every area. And it says, the ungodly are not so, but they are like the child, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. And then it says, no sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. It says something about them. It's talking about the people that hinder themselves. You see, there are people like that. The river of life is there. They will not drink. And the healing virtue is there to flow through their body. They will not believe. And the prosperity is there from the Lord. They will not take it. And the Lord is saying, I would have blessed them. I would have uh, changed their lives. I would have converted them. I would have saved them. But they would not. Look at Psalm 81. Psalm 81. I'm reading from verse 10. Psalm 81. And we're reading from verse 10. These are the people that miss out by themselves. The Lord wanted to bless them, but they would not be blessed because they hinder themselves. They prevent themselves. Look at verse 10. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide. Tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. And I will feel it. Here God says, open your mouth wide. And I will feel it. Look at verse 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice. Israel would none of me. He said, I wanted to bless them. I wanted to make them prosper. I wanted to make them productive. I wanted to overload them with blessing. Every day, he says, but they prevent themselves. They hinder themselves. Not so the unbelievers, not so the ungodly, because they're like chaff that the wind drives away. Look at verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. He said, if they had listened to me, if they had not hindered themselves, I would have blessed them. And the abundance of blessing would have been upon them. Look at verse 16. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. And with honey, out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. He said, but he will not listen. But he will not believe. But they will not accept the word of God. He said, the ungodly are not so, not so. They are like chaff driven away. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 42. Psalm 107, verse 42. It says, the righteous shall see it and rejoice. And all iniquity shall stop her mouth. The one that is defenseless and the one that doesn't want Jesus to be his savior. The one that, want, that says, my religion is enough. My good character is enough. I give money to the beggars. I don't need Jesus. He'll be like the ungodly people on the day of judgment. He will not be able to stand because he'll be defenseless. Come back to Psalm 1. I'm reading from verse 5. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. No sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Because he'll be denounced. He'll be rejected. He cannot stand. He does not have the mark of the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. But because he doesn't have the mark of the blood of Jesus, he's denounced. He's rejected on that final day. And when the saints of God go marching in, because Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto 
unto myself. When he receives us unto himself, the people that say they want to remain ungodly, they will not stand, they will not stay, they will not abide in the congregation of the righteous. Psalm 5, Psalm 5, I'm reading from verse 5. In Psalm 5, it tells us in verse 5, Psalm 5, verse 5, it says, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all the workers of iniquity. Those foolish people who will not accept salvation free and full and final. Those foolish people who will not look at the cross of Jesus Christ and be forgiven and be saved. It says they will not stand on that final day. And then their damnation. Their description. Their destruction. Their defenselessness. Their denunciation. Now their damnation. Look at Matthew chapter 25. They will spend eternity with Satan. And with the fallen angels. In Matthew chapter 25. I'm reading here from verse 41. It says, Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Tell me the rest. I'm going to read that again. Get ready to tell me. It says, Then shall he say also, Unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye, uh, ye cursed unto everlasting fire. Tell me. Prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, hellfire was not created for you. Hellfire was not created for me. I will not go there. I will not go to another person's place. My place is heaven. I said my place is heaven. It says, but these people that reject Christ and they reject salvation and they reject forgiveness and they reject the blood of Jesus and they reject the atonement that he made and they reject the offer of salvation. It says, they'll go and live with Satan and his angels forever and ever. But thank God I'm not among them. As you give up your life, if you give your life to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I come. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Lord Jesus, I accept you. I will no more walk in the way of sinners. And then after you are born again, you will not continue in your sin. Then blessing will be upon your life. Miracles will be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now. The promise of God's abiding benefits. The promise of God's Abiding benefits. Look at uh, Psalm 1. I'm reading the first part of verse 1 and the first part of verse 6 to bracket everything together. Look at this. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Look at verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Blessed is the man. Who is the man? Verse 6 says, is the righteous. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the redeemed. Who is the man? Blessed is the ransomed. Who is this man? Blessed is the righteous. Who is this man? Blessed is the upright. Who is this man? Blessed is the one that comes into the kingdom of God. And he says, yes, I believe. Uh, come back to that verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Who is this man? Let Psalm 32 tell you. Psalm 32, who is this man that is blessed? And so you can say, you can identify yourself. Whether you are the man, whether you are the woman or not, blessed is the man. Look at Psalm 32 verse 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile, there is no deceit, there is no hypocrisy. It says the man that comes out of sin and he comes to the Savior and he says, I receive Jesus as my Savior. I believe in him. It says, blessed is the man that the Lord will not impute iniquity because the Lord has forgiven him. Look at chapter 34, chapter 34, Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. These are the people that are blessed. You trust in the Lord. You trust him for salvation. I'm not trusting the works of my hand. I'm not trusting my good work. I'm not trusting giving money to the beggars. I'm not tr tr trusting in being a good-natured person. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. I believe the Lord. I see him at Calvary. And I know he died for me. I accept that. I believe that. I receive that. And I know because I receive that, that's my only hope. And that's my only confidence. I trust in the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying to you. He says, blessed is a man. You trust him. You believe him. And because you trust him, you believe him. He takes your sins away. Blessed is a man. Look at Psalm 40. I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 40. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Blessed is that man. He makes a personal choice. He makes a personal decision. He says, he will be my savior. He will be my healer. He'll be my deliverer. I know with him all things are possible. And because with him all things are possible, I surrender. I give myself unto him. I would lean on him. I will depend on him. I will not look at idols. I will not depend on family, uh, family idol, family religion. I trust him and trust him alone. He says, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. It says, he'll not follow after backsliders. He will not copy backsliders. He'll not meddle with them that are given to change. He gives himself totally to the Lord. And the Lord says, blessed is that man. I hope I'm describing your life. I said, I hope I'm describing your life. You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Psalm 65, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 65, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. The Lord calls you. And the people that respond immediately, Yes, Lord, I am here. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I repent. Yes, Lord, I believe you. I believe you for my salvation. I believe you for my healing. I believe you for my deliverance. I believe you for my miracle. And the people God calls and then they respond. Blessed are those people because the Lord chooses them and causes to approach unto thee, unto, uh, unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house and even of thy holy temple. It says, he says, chooses, he chooses you. When he calls you and you answer, he calls your name. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll say, yes, Lord, I accept. I come, I come. Just as I am, I come unto thee. And when you come like that, he will forgive your sin. When you come like that, he will change your life. When you come like that, he'll heal your sickness because he calls you and you respond. He chooses you and blessings will multiply in your life in Jesus' name. Because blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And blessed is the man that standeth not in the way of the sinners. Blessed is the man that seateth not in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man because his delight is in the watch of the Lord. And in his word does he meditate day and night. He shall be, I will be, he shall be, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And it says, your leave also shall not wither. And whatsoever you do, you will prosper. The ungodly are not so, because the ungodly are like chaff driven by the wind. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. And the sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I will not perish. I said I will not perish. In this life, I will not perish. In the world to come, I will not perish. 
the blessing of the Lord is available right now. Salvation available, healing available, deliverance available, forgiveness available, and everything we need from the Lord, your miracle is ready right now. Anybody available there to take it? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I am ready. Lord, I am ready. I want you to open your mouth to the Lord and tell the Lord, you have seen the description. You have seen the definition and you have seen the people that are the blessed people of the Lord. You'll tell the Lord, I will be that man. I will be that woman. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, any sin in your life? Any evil in your life? Any iniquity in your life? Secret sin? Besetting sin? In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your hand to the Lord. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence I will daily live. No more in the beer pile. In his presence I will daily live. No more with those gangs. I'm praying for you now. Salvation is coming to your soul. Forgiveness is coming to you. And your name is going to be written in the book of life in heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our new brothers and new sisters. I thank you, Lord, for those you have called. Many are called, but few are chosen. These people who are called, they have responded. Choose them and bring them to your kingdom in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, from today, a new change will come to them in Jesus' name. Salvation has come. Eternal life has come. Forgiveness has come. Freedom has come. Make it permanent for them. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. I want to hear you. I am saved. And I pray that God will keep you in that salvation in Jesus' name. Those are in front of me. I said the rain is coming. Somebody there, you have testimony tonight. Somebody there has a miracle tonight. Healing tonight. Deliverance tonight. Power tonight. All those things that bound you today, today, today. Where are you? I said today, you are free in Jesus' name. The miracle is not uh, come tomorrow. It is here today. Your healing is here today. And when we finish praying the prayer tonight, you check yourself, that thing will no more be there. The thing in the head, everything is gone. The thing in the stomach, everything is gone. The things you've been taking to the hospital tonight, they are gone. It's coming. I said it's coming. Where are the candidates for miracle? Wonderful, wonderful. I see the heavens open upon you. I said, I see the heavens open upon you. Keep up that hand, keep up that hand. When you hear the final amen, you check up, you see that that person, that uh, personality has packed this load, is gone. Keep up that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight because I know this is our miracle day. And I send forth your power upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. From the top of their head to the tip of their toe. Lord, I pray your power will operate. The miracle will come in there. Total redemption. Complete healing. And total deliverance you give to your people in Jesus' name. I pronounce healing. I pronounce deliverance. Receive that healing in Jesus' name. The pain inside those ears, I command pain be healed in Jesus' name. All those things that torture your body, all those things that harass your life, this is the end. I command that torture, I command that terrible spirit. And I command all those things scratching you as if you scratch yourself with almost something sharp and blood be coming out. Be free in Jesus' name. I proclaim prosperity. I prophesy prosperity into every one of your lives in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I pray poverty will vanish away. Penury will vanish away. Joblessness will vanish away. And Lord, those who are selling the markets and they have not been selling, Lord, I pray all the buyers will be flowing to them, flocking to them. Oh Lord, I pray you will bless them beyond their expectation in Jesus' name. Put testimony in every mouth. And Lord, I pray you drive away all those devourers and bring abundance of blessings upon their lives. Joy in every life. Laughter in every life. Prosperity in every life. Success in every life. The past is forgotten. A new day has come. Blessed is this man. Blessed is this woman. Everywhere you go, blessed is the man. When you come in, blessed is the woman. In your family, blessed is the man. In your yard, blessed is the woman. And the mouths of unbelievers and the mouths of gainsayers will be stopped in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle. Receive the peace of God. Receive all the deliverances he has given you. Receive the dominion. You are free. You are blessed. You are prospered. From today onwards, that better life has started. And when we see again, there will be testimony coming from everywhere. Lord, confirm it for everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Nothing will take away your blessing.